Welcome to this week's episode of Capital City Sports. I'm your host, Cassidy Shepard. It was a busy week for Gamecock Athletics, so let's get into the action. Last week, it seemed as if men's basketball was finally turning the corner as they make their push for a March Madness bid. But then news broke that Justin Minaya was out indefinitely with a dislocated thumb. And then two days later, the team laid an egg against an Ole Miss team that was 1-7 in, in conference play. Rebels guard Brian Tyree dropped a career-high 38 points, and the Gamecocks couldn't keep up, falling 84-70 in Oxford last Wednesday. On the women's side of basketball, the top-ranked Gamecocks picked up yet another victory over a ranked opponent. South Carolina picked up their eighth win over a ranked team when they knocked off number 25 Arkansas in Fayetteville last Thursday. South Carolina is absolutely rolling right now and has not lost since November. Softball is back in Columbia as the Gamecocks hosted the Carolina Classic this past weekend. The team started the season ranked 19th and was able to get their season started off on the right foot. South Carolina notched two narrow victories on Friday when they took down Ohio State and North Dakota State by a combined three runs. Men's basketball returned to Colonial Life Arena on Saturday, looking to sweep Texas A&M on the season. Tom Santanella was there for the action. Thanks, Cassidy. After losing to Ole Miss last Wednesday, the Gamecocks were able to get back on the right track as they knocked off the Texas A&M Aggies 74-54 and improved the 14-9 on the season. Texas A&M came to play on Saturday and raced out to a 9-0 lead over the first four minutes behind Wendell Mitchell's fast start. It was the Gamecocks' leading scorer, A.J. Lawson, who righted the ship for USC and got the team back in it. From then on, the teams traded blows for much of the first half, keeping the fans into the action but South Carolina was able to pull away with the strong defensive showing and their ability to turn defense into offense. The Gamecocks ended the half on a high note as Jermaine Cousinard gave everyone flashbacks to the Kentucky game with a running three-point buzzer beater, giving the team an 18-point lead. Lawson and Cousinard were on their A game to start the second half, and from there, the floodgates opened as USC built a 30-point lead. The Aggies never truly threatened again, and South Carolina was able to cruise to a comfortable 20-point lead. With Selection Sunday just over a month away, each game gets more and more important for the South Carolina Gamecocks as they sit squarely on the bubble. They now turn their attention to the Georgia Bulldogs this Wednesday before returning to Colonial Life Arena next Saturday to try to get even with the Tennessee Volunteers. For Cap City Sports, I'm Tom Santanello. Back to you, Cassidy. Thanks, Tom. The basketball team wasn't the only one squaring off against Texas A&M on Saturday. Equestrian scored a huge win on Saturday when they took down the fifth-ranked Aggies in a tight matchup. The match came down to a tiebreaker, and the Gamecocks' overall score gave them the edge. Softball had their third game of the weekend against Southern Illinois. Ethan Still was at Beckham Field with the coverage. Thanks, Cassidy. The Gamecocks continued their season opening tournament this weekend with a Saturday afternoon matchup against Southern Illinois University. Kelsey O would get the start in the circle for the Gamecocks and she would prove to be deadly from the start with three strikeouts within the first two innings. The bats would come alive then in the second for Carolina. Katie Preble and Lauren Stewart would each hit a single of their own. And then Baylor transfer Cassidy Krupit would find one herself, allowing Preble to run home. Now from there, the Gamecocks ran with offensive momentum, finding contact and ground balls left and right. Carolina would take opportunities on their own terms as well, with several bases stolen, including home. SIU would struggle defensively and ultimately close the inning out after nine runs. O would remain fantastic in the circle with two more strikeouts in the third, allowing her team to return up to the plate fairly quickly. And with bats still scorching, Kenzie McGuire would reach first base on a single and Mac Bozel would thread one between first base and the foul line, sending McGuire home while she herself ended up on third. Bozel would eventually find home as well, and the Gamecock lead increased to 11. The Southern Illinois defense would tighten up in the fourth with three quick outs, and the tide began to turn. Megan Brown would hit a single to begin the fifth, and Carolina would then retire Kelsey O for the night. 
The task of closing would be given to freshman Carson Oaks. Oaks initially would struggle walking two to load the bases, and Kylie Decker would hit a sack fly to right center, putting SIU on the board with one run. One run would be as close as they could get, however. The bases would be loaded again after another walk by Oaks, but Lauren Stewart deep at the wall, preventing a grand slam, ended the game with Carolina on top, 11-1 to over SIU. The Gamecocks are back in action on Sunday afternoon, wrapping up their opening weekend against UNCG, taking on the Spartans. For Capital City Sports, I'm Ethan Still. Back to you, Cassidy. I was able to sweep the competition this weekend when they defeated the Spartans of UNC Greensboro on Sunday. The Gamecocks won 3-2 in extra innings. Kelsey O picked up her third victory of the weekend as she paced the team throughout the Classic. Women's basketball is about to play one of their biggest games of the season when they take on UConn. This will be South Carolina's 10th game against a ranked opponent this year, the most in the nation. The Gamecocks will be taking the court in front of a sold out Colonial Life Arena and look for their first win over the Huskies in program history. That's all I have to say because I'm on my way there right now. Thank you for tuning in to the first ever live edition of Capital City Sports. Be sure to follow us on our social media at CCS on SGTV. For Capital City Sports, I'm Cassidy Shepard. We'll see you next week.